Today we're going to make paper out of the juice sacks that are coming from the coffee roaster uh, here at our studio. So we have hermetic coffee roasters uh, here at the St. Pauli Paper Studios. And they come in every single day and they roast many, many, many beans that they then uh, distribute around the city to uh, avid coffee drinkers. Um, so one of the projects that we've been doing is actually to transform the jute sacks uh, into paper pulp that then uh, we make paper out of, and then they sell them at the different cafes around the city. So uh, we're going to demonstrate today how to make paper out of the jute sacks from coffee roasters. Here we've taken the, uh, the jute sack and we want to cut it into small pieces uh, for the Hollander meter. So using the rotary cutter, I am just cutting it into small pieces about the size of a stamp. Now that we've cut up our burlap, our jute sacks uh, from the coffee making, we want to cook them. Uh, the longer you cook the fiber, the better. Uh, for the burlap, it's basically going to open up the cellulose and create a stronger paper. This is very important. Um, you can cook it for upwards to two hours. This is probably the best if you want a really nice snappy paper. But I found out of interest of time and energy and resources that 30, minute, 30 minutes is the minimum amount of time to cook it to make a nice sheet of paper. So I've taken my um, water. Here is 12 liters of water with washing soda already in it. And here is one kilo uh, of jute fiber. So this is one sack. And I'm loading it into our washing soda. And I'm going to turn on the heater. So this is 12 liters of water to 200 grams of washing soda. And so we mix it in. So here we are cooking it. And here you can see that just putting it in there, it starts to come apart. The weave is coming apart. So we will cook this for one half hour at a heavy boil. Here we have our jute sack, and we've cut it up and we've cooked it uh, for 30 minutes in uh, the washing soda. So we have rinsed it for 20 minutes, uh, just running water through it. Uh, depending on the type of machine you have, you can actually take this right in and start to beat it uh, right away. Uh, with our small Hollander, what I'm going to do is separate this uh, one kilogram of material into four buckets, so approximately uh, uh, 250 uh, grams each bucket. And basically, I'm just going to do it by putting a, a handful about in each bucket until it is uh, evenly distributed. That seems to be the best way to do this. So here I have divided it now by four.
mixed in with the um, jute sack. Uh, it's very important uh, to use another material for our machine because the flax will actually, or the, the, uh, the jute sack actually will jam the machine. And so this flax is going to act as a vehicle to help pull the material through. Um, you could use cotton, you could use bamboo, you could use asparagus, you could use all sorts of different things. Uh, here we, uh, we use flax. So, uh, the next step is that we're going to load it into the Hollander. So here we have our Hollander beater. Um, we are going to turn the Hollander on. We're going to add our water, two buckets of water. And then we're going to add our pipe. Here's one bucket of water. Our jute sacks, which have a mixture of jute and flax. And I'm going to add um, somewhere around 10, 8 to 10 scoops, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9. The more pulp we add, the thicker the sheet will be. So the thickness of the sheet is determined by the amount of pulp that you add there to in, in proportion to the water. But also the desired thickness is based on what you want to do with the sheet of paper. So if you would like to do something like an etching, then you would want a thicker sheet of paper. Versus if you're doing something just like a sketchbook or a journal book, you might want thinner text page. So it's all relative to what you're doing. So here we've added 10 scoops, 
of the uh, coffee sacks. And now I'm, I'm hogging the vat, so I'm mixing it up. And then I'm going to take my mold. Here is my mold, and here is my decal. And the mold and decal are fitted together, uh, extending my arms out from my body or away from my body. I'm going to scoop the mold and decal into the water, pull it straight up, and then I'm going to gently shake it side to side and to and from, holding it level with the ground. Okay, so this is one quick continuous motion. Extending my arms out from my body, scooping it into the water, pulling it straight up, and very gently shaking side to side and to and from, holding it level with the ground. I'm not rocking it like this, right? I'm holding it level with the ground. So I do this uh, uh, until the water has uh, run out of the sheet of paper. And you can see here now our pulp has settled onto the mold and our sheet of paper is being formed. Okay. You can let it kind of strike the code, let it drain. If you uh, accidentally shake too much, it's very difficult with this mold. Um, or if you start crying, or if something happens, a water main breaks in your studio and it starts peeing all over your paper and it destroys your sheet, um, then uh, you can do what's called kissing the sheet back. So if we make a mistake or we don't like the way the sheet is formed, we can kiss the piece of paper back. And we do this by just flipping the mold over, releasing it, dropping it on the surface of the water, and then the sheet of paper comes off. And then we just have to hog the sheet back into the vat, and then we re-pull our sheet of paper again. So again, extending my arms out from my body, I scoop it into the water, all the way down, pull it straight up, gently shaking side to side, and to and from, and allowing the pulp to settle on the frame. So every sheet of paper that we pull, we are going to add two scoops of pulp and mix it up. Uh, in this way, we're able to maintain uh, a consistent thickness to our sheet of paper. So here I'm going to strike a pose and let it drain a little bit. Our sheet of paper drained and now we're going to cooch it. To cooch the sheet we line it up uh, on the edge of our post. So here we have um, our post it's comprised of a, of a board on the bottom, a very thick felt, and then uh, basically a bunch of other sheets of paper that we've laid down on uh, interfacing uh, which is, in this case, it's Pellon. So we're going to line it up with the sheet that's below it, very slowly lower it down. Um, we're not slapping it down or jumping around like a monkey. We're actually very slowly going to lower it down. Then we're going to press down on the back of the ribs of the frame. Or if you don't have ribs, you just massage the back. And then you gently open it up and your sheet of paper releases onto the interfacing. After your sheet is cooched, um, and after your sheet is cooched and passed off onto the interfacing, we then put another piece of interfacing on the top and gently push it into contact so that you can see where the next sheet goes. And so the next sheet would go right over the top of this piece. And in this way, we can build up what's called a post and then here at the end of the day, we will press this in the, our hydraulic press to push the water out, and then we will hang it dry. Are you ready? Yeah. So now we have finished making our sheets of paper, and we're going to press it. So pressing is very important because it squishes the water out of the paper, which speeds up the drying. <clears throat> it also pushes the fibers closer together which makes a stronger paper. The more pressure you can give the paper, the stronger the paper. So here we're giving it 20 tons of pressure, and you can see the water coming out. So we will press it 
for a few minutes here and let the water come out and then we will hang it to dry. And take our stick out and then we'll hang the paper. So once the paper comes out of the press, it actually is really durable and you can move it around quite easily. So from here, we are going to take the post right out. Take the uh, paper off with the interfacing attached. And we're going to hang it up here to dry. Kind of like hanging your clothing to dry. Kind of gently pulling it up, and it doesn't really matter which way they're facing. Uh, if you hang things to dry, they generally will dry in a matter of a day or two. If you want to speed up the drying, you can turn on a fan to circulate the air. Okay, so our uh, burlap paper is dry, and uh, we've taken it down from the line where it was hanging to dry. And now I'm just going to peel it off of the interfacing. And you can see I have a little bit of a curl, so I'm actually going to go ahead and place it into a pile over here. And um, I'm going to put it in our press again later to, uh, to further press it. So here you can see the sheets just come right off. They peel very easily off of the interfacing. And uh, this is a very nice recipe. It's making a nice kind of sm flat, smooth, and kind of relatively snappy paper. This, this could easily run through your office printer at home. Uh, you could inkjet on it. You could run it through a reso graph. You could screen print on it. You could draw on it. You could paint on it. You could use it in book binding. It's a really um, great all-purpose paper. So uh, it, that's the recipe for the um, burlap paper using flax as an additive.